Um, Mike, in your situation, uh, what's your calorie intake right now? Uh, it's Today. about 2,800. 2800 all right i mean let's let's show that again like there's mike i mean this is a, a recent picture this one here in the black shorts 2800 calories and he's got visible abdominal definition vascularity single digit body fat if you remember in may of 23 i had plateau i wasn't i wasn't gaining any weight right so we added a fifth meal to my plan and i dropped five pounds but here again it's you know you change the metabolism Welcome to the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Podcast with Lee Hayward and Jeff Samataro. Since 1997, Lee Hayward's Total Fitness Bodybuilding has been online helping guys to build muscle, lose fat, and become the best version of themselves. The goal of this podcast is to provide you with real-world practical fitness and nutrition advice to look your best, improve your health, and feel confident in your own skin so you can live life to the fullest without having your body holding you back from doing the things you want to do. So if you're ready to get started, let's jump into the show. Welcome to the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Podcast. My name is Lee Hayward, and in today's episode, we're going to discuss how to get past fat loss plateaus. And this was a coaching call that I did with some of the members of the Muscle After 40 Blueprint program. And we break down the process of achieving a fitness and fat loss transformation and share some real world examples of guys who've already achieved their transformation. And I want to break it down because a lot of people think that the process of going from before to after is just like a linear journey. It's like, hey, I just do this X, Y, Z, boom, I get the results and it's all smooth sailing. But that's rarely the case. There's going to be some ups and downs in the journey. Like you, you may be kind of like beating your head against a wall. Like I'm doing all the right things, but I'm not seeing the results. And in these situations, we need to kind of look under the hood, see what's happening, and then do an overhaul. And a lot of times you actually have to take a step back in order to take two steps forward. So we're going to really deep dive into that in today's episode and share some real world examples. So without further ado, let's get to it. Uh, the results are going to be uh, in direct proportion to the effort you put in, but we can't impact the results directly. Like we can all say, I want to lose weight. Well, you can't control what the scale says, but you can control what you put in your mouth. You can control what you do as far as exercise is concerned. You can control that, that stuff, but the actual results we can't control. So just keep coming back to the habits, the process, the routine. If you put in good inputs, eventually you're going to see some good outputs. But one thing I want to address here, and this is especially you know, important for a lot of the newer people is there's always a lag time. You know, you work out, you eat right, you do all the, the, the positive input. There's going to be a lag time between the work you put in and the results you see. To put things in perspective, when I would be starting a serious fat loss program, like let's say I was getting ready for a competition, which was always my <laughs> serious fat loss program, was always geared around competition. For the first month, I wouldn't even track my progress for the first month. I would just kind of I'm going on autopilot. I'm going to focus on meeting my nutritional intake, like eating the meals, doing the cardio, doing the workouts. I'm going to go through all the processes, but I'm not going to get hung up on, is this the scale dropping? Like, is the inches coming off the waistline? Like, I, I wouldn't even measure it. Like, what I would do, before I started, I would take my progress pictures and my measurements, and then i tuck them away because I didn't even want to look at them. And then I'd go through the process for about four to six weeks, and then after that four to six weeks, then I would get in, okay, now I'm going to start regularly tracking things. Because I found in that initial phase, your, your weight can fluctuate so much. And sometimes you put in a lot of work, like, hey, I, I worked out and I ate clean all week long. I didn't really see much progress or I don't look any different in the pictures. And, and it's almost disheartening. So I found like, just get that lag time out of the way. And then I would start strictly tracking progress, you know, taking regular progress pictures, taking the regular measurements, and I could start to see the progress compound. And the crazy thing is, is the leaner you get and the better shape you get in, the faster you see the changes. Like I, I know in Mike's case, like in these last few months, you've probably seen more changes than you have in months leading before, because now when you're so lean, every little bit matters. Like to put things in perspective, if someone's 50 pounds overweight and they lose five pounds, like they're not going to look any different because they still have 45 pounds of fat covering and blurring their definition. But if someone's just 10 pounds overweight and they lose five pounds, 
that's going to make a massive difference because the, th the skin and the fat is so thin, you're starting to lose the fat that's blurring the muscle definition and the detail, and you start to see those lines. And then when you get to the point where you've got virtually zero excess body fat, you're down in the single digits, even water manipulation can make a difference. But for someone who's got a lot to lose, water manipulation isn't going to matter if someone's 50 pounds overweight. Even losing five pounds of body fat is not going to really show. It's still progress. I mean, still celebrate the progress, but it's not going to have a visual impact in terms of like, whoa, look, look at the changes, right? It's just going to be a slightly smaller version of what you were before. You just have to realize it's it's a journey. You know, it's a, a phase you're going through and wherever that phase happens to be, right? We're all at different levels. But just, just to realize there's always a lag time between the effort you put in and the actual results you're going to see moving forward. A lot of times when we're going through our journey, you're going to get to the point where you're going to experience plateaus. Like it's it's usually at the start, you probably see smooth sailing, smooth progress. As long as you're good enough and good enough consistently, you generally see progress. But after a while, it's probably going to hit a plateau. If it starts to get to that point where it's, it's getting frustrating or you're starting to feel overwhelmed, just resort back to the basics versus this, hey, if I can't be perfect, if I can't have it all, screw it, I'm going to do nothing. Like that all or nothing trap, that is a real thing. And it's a tempting thing to fall into that trap. Like I still fall into that trap and I have to constantly remind myself something is better than nothing. I, if I can't be perfect, who cares? How can I be better than I was before? And I even catch myself in the moment sometimes. Like, like a prime example, this afternoon we were at a, a birthday party. For Harvey's, one of his classmates had a birthday party. They had the pizza and the ice cream and cake and all that stuff at the birthday party. I had a little bit. I had a slice of pizza and I had a small serving of cake. I didn't beat myself up over it. I mean, I enjoyed it. I partook in the in the party, but I, I didn't overindulge. Like I said, okay, one small slice of pizza. They had it cut in squares. So I had one square of pizza and I had one little slice of cake. And as far as drinks are concerned, of course, they had the sodas, the sugary sodas, or they had bottled water. Well, what did I choose? I chose a bottle of water little in the moment decisions like that and then catch yourself and say you know what okay i had that slice of pizza i had that cake chose a better drink option of water instead of soda but guess what happened afterwards right back on track for the very next meal like i didn't let it spiral out of control and say oh diet's blown you know start again on monday no start again very next meal these little things catching yourself in the moment can certainly help and you know, if you start to feel overwhelmed or you're like, oh, I screwed up, I cheated on my diet or whatever, just go back to the basics. Go back, start again for your very next meal. Like this is generally how progress happens. Like once you start a, pro a program, initially you're going to start to see some results. Like right now, I mean, you guys going through this program, you know, you have a workout plan, you've got an eating plan. As long as you're good enough and good enough consistently, you're going to see some progress there. Like it's it's virtually inevitable. If as long as you're consistent, you're going to start to see some progress. But eventually it's going to get to the point where that simple plan is going to start to plateau, right? We're going to need to break out of that plateau and do something different. And one of the guys that I'm working with now, he's more an advanced guy, been training for a while, been eating clean consistently, but he's at this plateau. And he was working with other coaches who kept saying, well, we need, just need to keep cutting calories, keep cutting calories. So like he's been averaging sub 2000 calories a day and still not losing weight. And we're like, okay, there comes a point of no return where we just don't want to keep cutting calories, you know, cause he's been trying that, like eating less than 2000 calories a day in the, in between like 15 to 1700 calories a day, tracking it through my fitness pal, no alcohol consumption. Like, so all the things are in line and we say okay you should be losing weight but you're not the metabolism is starting to slow down here and we need to revamp things we don't need to just uh, keep beating our head against the wall we need to change direction here the, the definition of insanity right is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results he's been doing that for a while like following this low calorie diet doing his workouts not seeing results you know stuck in that plateau so we don't want to keep repeating the same thing over and over again you know, sometimes, you know, you have to take a step back in order to take two steps forward. So the suggestion that I had, we need to reset your metabolism. We need to go through a metabolic reboot, right? To reset your metabolism because you're suppressing it by keeping your calories under 2000 a day. And I actually suggest let's focus on like 
going up to maintenance calories or even a slight surplus for a while to rebuild your metabolism, focus on building some muscle. And then once you've been doing that for a while, increasing your strength, increasing your performance in the gym, filling up your frame with some lean mass, then we can go back and focus on dialing it down, like getting into more fat loss for a while. But we need to kind of like do a diet break, refeed and reset your metabolism. And that made sense to him. You know, we, when, when I had our initial coaching calls together and we were planning this and strategizing, he said, yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to do that. The problem was, as soon as he did it, he did it for a few days, started eating more. Well, if you've been on a low carb diet and you've been keeping your calories to like 1500 to 1700, and then all of a sudden you start bumping them up over 2000 and you're eating more carbs, guess what's going to happen? you're going to gain some water retention because with carbohydrates, as we mentioned within the lose your gut challenge, carbohydrates, when you consume those and they get stored as glycogen, they retain three to four grams of water. So every gram of stored glycogen in your system retains three to four grams of water. This is why when people cut carbs, they lose weight quickly. And then when they reintroduce carbs, they regain weight quickly. This guy's gained a few pounds within the first week and he started to freak out. And he was like, oh, my God, this is terrible. I look worse than I did before. And he got overwhelmed and he, he actually quit. He like he quit the work and quit working out, quit the diet, just totally like went off the rails for a while because he got overwhelmed because he started to gain a few pounds. And I'm trying to like, OK, let's start again. Let's start again. But I want to use this analogy here to, to kind of really drive this point home. Imagine we want to renovate a kitchen. Right. So we have this old, outdated kitchen here and we're not happy with it and we want to renovate it. So it's like, you know what? I don't like the way this looks. I want a new one. Just like with our body. Right. Maybe we looking at our body you're like, I don't like this old body. I want a new one. Right. I want to do a whole renovation. OK, that makes sense. We want to renovate the kitchen. We want to renovate our body, if you will. We want the before to the after out with the old and in with the new. However, in order to go out with the old and in with the new. We got to tear it up. We got to tear out that kitchen. We got to go under construction. And in the process of that under construction, it's probably going to look worse than it was before. And if you're not comfortable with it temporarily looking worse than it was before, you're never going to get to the after. So in this case, with, with the gentleman I was mentioning, we, we need to reset your metabolism. We need to eat more food so that we can start building more muscle on your frame and get past this this plateau you're in, well, he did that and temporarily he looked worse than before, right? He was kind of like, you know, if we tear up the kitchen and if you start freaking out, like imagine you have a contractor come in, going to, going to renovate the kitchen for you and tears out the cupboards and stuff. And then maybe your wife says, oh my God, this looks terrible. Put it back to the way it was before, right? I don't like this. Put it back to the way it was before. Well, if you never get past that hump, you're never going to get to the to the after, if you will, right? To where you actually want to go. That was the situation with this guy because as soon as he started to put on a couple pounds of water retention from eating more carbohydrates, he freaked out and he said, oh, I can't do this. And he's, his solution was, I'm going back to my old diet. The old one that he, he wasn't happy with and he was stuck in a plateau with, but he says, well, at least it, it was better than, than the under construction phase. And I say, you got to let that shit go. Right. You have to realize that sometimes we need to tear it down in order to build it back better. And this applies with bodybuilding. You just don't go from before to after. Like there's a process in between. Right. And a lot of people just see the before and after, but they don't see the whole transformation in between. And here's some of my journey. Like this right here was in 2007 when I won the overall title at our provincial championships. This was my heyday in bodybuilding, if you will. In order to lay the foundation there, I got myself up to 240 pounds and it was a soft 240 pounds. And then I had to sculpt that. Like I had the clay to work with, if you will, if we're looking like a sculptor, I put the clay on and now I have to sculpt that clay into something that actually resembles a bodybuilding physique. So it took a lot of work. And I mean, I can, sh you can check this out for yourself. I want to just open up that link. Six months out from the contest, I was 240 pounds. I mean, I had a lot of mass on my frame. That was the biggest I ever was. But I transformed it from the, the fat, if you will. I focused on, like, I had a gut that's sticking out further than my chest here. And I really focused on getting myself back in shape here. So I heavy training, 
eating better quality food really packed on a lot of mass here. So it was kind of like a bulking phase, if you will. And then I went through my contest cutting phase, right? Which was gradually trying to whittle away that extra body fat, you know, week by week by week. And over the course of six months, I trimmed myself down to contest shape. You can see the transformation taking place. I think these pictures were taken every two weeks, right? Until the point where I got down to basically single digit body fat and contest shredded. But that was a journey and I had to be willing to let myself look worse initially in order to get to that phase where I got to you know, the, achieve that transformation. So it's just like the kitchen renovation. You just don't go from before to after. You have to initially, you look a bit worse as you're going through that in order to get to the after. And I want to share one of the guys who's joining us here, Mike. I mean, Mike went through a similar journey as well. Right. I mean, Mike's transformation. I love sharing Mike's example because it's a real world example here of how this all works. In 2020, he went on a fat loss cutting diet, basically low carb, intermittent fasting, and lost a lot of weight. I mean, yes, he, he achieved some success, but he was kind of like stuck at a plateau in 2021, not really happy with the direction his fitness was headed and wanted to focus on building muscle. Well, if he had to kept doing low carb, intermittent fasting, that type of diet, he wouldn't have built the muscle. He wouldn't have filled out his frame as we see in the in the later pictures here in 2022 and 2023. And this is when he came on board with the Muscle After 40 program from 2021 to 2022, then to 2023, filled out his frame even more. And now this year, I mean, he's even bigger and more muscular than ever. But I just want to share this this journey here so like in 2023 mike you can even comment on this as well like did you kind of feel like you were peaking out there as far as muscularity and definition uh 2023 i was actually bulking well that's what i'm getting at you, you like yeah you that phase and then you you wanted to actually go through a bulk so I'm actually going to share right. this here the picture in the middle with the yellow shorts this was mike's bulk like looking at these pictures it's deceptive because <laughs> 2023 or okay red shorts picture you're looking pretty good uh in the black pit black shorts picture at this most recent one you're looking really good i mean literally the best shape you've ever been in your life that middle picture we could argue like you had to take a step back you know yep. like you and ironically you were heavier there than in the other pictures yes i'm 20, I'm 20 pounds i'm 20 pounds heavier in the middle picture than the one on the right i'm now at 162 so you had to take a step back, give yourself a diet break, folks, on building some muscle, resetting your metabolism, which ultimately allowed you to go through this cutting phase to get to your best shape ever. So it's literally just like I said before, you know, you took a step back in order to be able to take two steps forward. That's what it was here. And the guy who I'm referring to, I'm not mentioning his name now, but I'm going to share this video with him because he, he he's not here joining the call, so I'm not going to mention him, but he's afraid to take that step back. He's afraid to temporarily look worse in order to look a lot better. And you need to overcome that mental block. And this is something like, as you're going through your journey, you will go through phases where, okay, you make some progress. It, it'll, you'll hit a plateau. Plateaus are inevitable. Everybody's going to hit them sooner or later. And sometimes when you're at that plateau, you may have to reevaluate and, and change things around. So like in Mike's case, if he had to just kept dieting, he probably would have stayed at a plateau, but he had to go through a, a bulk phase where he purposely gained some weight, looked a little worse. I mean, now it was not terrible. I mean, you can still see visible abdominal definition. It's not like he packed on 50 pounds of, of fat. I was but a bit fluff. It was fluff. There we go. <laughs> That's a nice word to say. Fluff. Fluffed <laughs> up a little bit. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, you look a little worse. But then that, that set him up then to make this progress over the last year now to get so much better. Right. Well, and if you remember during that bulk, I, I started the bulk at Christmas of 22 and stopped at January of 24. So it literally was almost just over a full year. If you remember in May of 23, I had plateau. I wasn't, I wasn't gaining any weight. Right. So we added a fifth meal to my plan and I dropped five pounds. But here again, it's, you know, you change the metabolism and yeah. then it went you know, it, then it eventually caught up, you know, and, but th that one, just adding that one meal, I mean, within two weeks, I had dropped five pounds. It was crazy. I thought, this is not right. <laughs> You're eating more and burning more. 
let's just talk about that for a moment. Like, because a lot of people, when they want to lose fast, they, you know, they keep thinking restriction, restriction, restriction. And yes, to a certain degree, the calories in, calories out, you know, and if you are overeating, especially if you're overeating processed foods and you are truly in a calorie surplus, yes, you need to have some sort of restriction in there. But once you get everything, you know, you're eating right, you're exercising, you're doing everything, simply eating less doesn't always pan out. Like the body and the metabolism isn't static. There's that G flux. And we talked about that before in past coaching calls, this energy fluctuation. When you eat more, you burn more. When you eat less, you burn less. Like there's, there's all these hormonal responses to the body. It's not static. And a lot of people just think of this mathematical equation, calories in, calories out. But they're not thinking that the variables are changing. It fluctuates. When you eat more, you burn more, right? When you eat less, you burn less. So in Mike's case, I mean, that, that was crazy because he was eating four meals a day. He said, okay, I'm, I'm not seeing progress, right? We said, okay, we're going to try and bulk up, right? Reset your metabolism here, right? Go through this metabolic reboot added a fifth meal and what happened instead of gaining weight which is what I everyone thought okay Mike's going to gain weight we added a fifth meal he lost weight you know you had to be willing to go through that now I mean it did catch up I mean as as I showed in those pictures you did fluff up a little bit but that built new muscle on your frame it reset your metabolism got you out of this being in a calorie deficit and suppressing everything to the phase where now you were actually building and then that set you up. So then when we did transition back into the calorie deficit, like you are now, your body responded so much better. And now, I mean, it's crazy to see the progress you've made over the past year, but yeah. you're willing to, to go through that. You can literally self-sabotage yourself. Like so many people, they don't want to see themselves go backwards. Like they always want to be moving forwards, right? They never, ever want to see any decline. And I know that the guy I'm talking about now in the group, I mean, he, he's lost all like he's surface layer body fat and he's in, in good shape. And by average people standards, they, people are probably like, wow, you know, you look really good. Whereas he wants to go to from lean to ripped. He wants to make that transition from lean to ripped. But his current approach has kept him plateaued for months in this lean approach. And I mean, if you're eating 1500 calories a day and, and you can't lose fat, we're not going to go to a thousand calories a day or 500 calories a day or just stop eating. Like, I mean, sure, that might work in the short term, but I mean, that's not a sustainable way to try and go about it. We need to rebuild that metabolism, get that energy fluctuation, that G flux built up so that he's burning more, eating more, burning more. And then once with that metabolism is firing up, then we can gradually start incorporating lower calorie cutting again and get him moving forward again in terms of fat loss. And then again, I love sharing Mike's picture here because, again, it's a prime example of that. It's one step back, but he was able to take two steps forward, right? So, I mean, now the shape of your life after going through that bulk phase, <laughs> that fluff up phase, if you will. And it was tough. You know, I didn't have abs until I was 57. It's not like this is my childhood, you know, right. my teenage years, you know, going back to that. No, I grew up the, the out of shape kid to turn into the out of shape fat adult when i finally had abs at 57 and it was real tough to, to eat more i didn't want to lose the abs i mean i worked so damn hard to get them <laughs> exactly you know? and, it, and at 59 you have to realize hey you know this is the right thing if you want to you know at that point i already set the goal of doing this show i need to get bigger i need to put on some some mass if that's what it took i had to just not worry about losing the abs because they would come back yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that, Mike. Like, I'm sure like that was a, a mental block. Like as you were going through this, I'm sure there was like self-doubt in your mind. Like, what the hell am I doing here? Like, should I go back on my, you know, the, the low calorie diet and try to lose the fat again? But you had to trust the process and say, OK, th there's method to the madness here. I'm going to purposely get bigger and stronger and do a lean bulk, as they say, and which, you, which you technically did. It's not like Mike went yeah. out eating burgers and fries and pizza to gain the weight. I mean, you, you just ate more real food. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, I would like to speak to that. Mike and others have had this marvelous transformation for abdominal definition. Many people in here who come from tremendous challenges of 500, 400, 300 pounds of weight and will have that sagging skin and that, that unique change where they don't have the abdominal definition and may never. And I want to tell them, but let's not focus on that so much as you are healthier and better now. You have, you can live, you have longevity. 
And that's why it's total fitness bodybuilding, total fitness, not six pack abdominal definition fitness. And as much as that is a marvelous marker, and I'm never going to decry that, I would like that. But I speak to those people, my friends who have much loose skin in front and oh, maybe I should have just stayed back where I was because at least I look better. I don't have this sagging, bagging skin. And I said, just a second, that's a badge of honor. You're carrying with you signs on your body that you have worked so hard to get rid of all of that. Carry that with pride. Carry that with joy because... You don't have to carry that extra 100, 300. As one person said to me, three pounds, three turkeys in my body, right? You don't carry those up and down the stairs every day. And so I really encourage what you said. It's the principles, not just simply what you turn into, but the principles. Every body is different and every response is different. Every metabolism is different, but the principles remain the same. And if we follow those principles, the changes that happen to our lives will be extraordinary. And I want to encourage those who are in the group, they'll never look like that. True. But do you want to continue being what you are now and living with the detriments of that, the, the increased blood pressure, diabetes, hypertension, all of those things? You want to have that? I would much rather, much rather you being fit and able to climb upstairs and play with your dogs and your kids than just simply rock and six pack. Not again, Mike and, I, and Jeff and others who have that beauty that they can look at. But I want to speak to those people who've come out of tremendous obesity and go, well, I don't look like that. What, what am I doing? Why am I even trying this? I, I want to encourage them, keep going. You have made a beautiful transformation from non-health to health. And that cannot be just simply a uh, muscular definition. It's an overall life transformation. And when that happens, no amount of money can take that away from you. It's a marvelous change. So I just wanted to speak to that, Lee. Well, I appreciate you for sharing that, Paul. And, and it's, it's true, like not everybody's going to have a bodybuilder physique. Right. And some people just are going to have that excess loose skin. I mean, Mike still has some excess loose skin. I mean, like yeah. you can hide it quite well in pictures. But like if, if you started like pinching in the lower abs and pulling it out, like, OK, yeah, there's loose skin there. I made a video about that a while back, like sharing my own loose skin story. But again, I love how you're referring to it like it's a badge of honor because you're much healthier and better off and your quality of life is exponentially better not having that loose skin filled out with an extra 50 or 100 plus pounds of fat that is clogging your arteries and weighing you down and you know shortening your lifespan. I mean, I would much rather have some loose skin. Sure, there's ways if, if you really want to go the extra step. I mean, I know people who've gone like getting tummy tucks and getting some of that loose skin surgically removed. That that may be an option. You know, once, <laughs> once you've achieved your, your fat loss goals, if that is that might be an option for some. But even if it's not, and you just keep the loose skin, you're still exponentially better and healthier and going to live a better quality of life with that versus having the fat filling that skin out. Yeah. And it's amazing what fashion can do because we're not all walking around with our shirts off and our tummies exposed. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we wear, well, we'll wear clothes better and we will walk better and we will move better. People say, man, you look 20 years younger. That in and of itself is a marvelous comment. I mean, I, I know some of the guys in here have come from heavy experiences and are getting lighter and slimmer. Well done. Well done. And I'm, I'm from two, I'm 260, as you remember, going down to 140. Well, 140, not 149. But mm -hmm. oh, man, I would much rather be where I am now than where I was at 260. And you know, I was hating my life. I hated my life. Now I, I, can't, I can't wait to get up the next day. Isn't that a marvelous thing to have in your life? Yeah, it's it shows the real transformation. I mean, sure, everybody wants the trophy of the abs or the physique or the biceps or you know the the show off muscles. I mean, I I, I love it. I, I admire it and everything else, but it's so much more than that. I'm sure everybody here, you know, people in your own personal life who are suffering the consequences of poor health and fitness. 
Like I, I'm seeing it a lot now with um, some of my relatives and uh, parents. It's a challenge to walk up the stairs. It's a challenge to do yard work. You know, the stuff that years ago they could do with without even thinking about it, taking it for granted. Like, for example, like my mother, I mean, I've shared how she's going through some health challenges now and her health is deteriorating. I mean, to get groceries now is a big ordeal. Like that, that is a max effort workout for her to go to the grocery store. I mean, like you don't want to get to that stage where you can't even do basic things for yourself or you can't climb a flight of stairs. Like, I mean, and we see that. I'm sure every one of you know people in your personal life who've gone through that, right? And it's a sad thing to see. So, I mean, that's where the real fitness journey is. And of course, nobody in, in the online fitness world and YouTube and Instagram influencers, like they're not talking about this stuff. It's like, hey, get, get shredded six pack abs, you know? As you mature, your priorities change. The real value. At my own plateau, Lee, when I was journeying, it was really hard to get me from one down from one hundred and sixty to where I am now. And we had we kept looking at it and looking at it and figuring out what's going wrong. And again, I had to take a couple steps back and then go at it again differently. And we found out that it was my reliance on protein shakes. When I couldn't get real food, I would substitute it with protein shakes, thinking that I was getting my protein in that way. To some degree, that was true, but your body needs all the, all the other micronutrients within the food, not just simply in the protein shakes, like the magnesium and the zinc, all those other minerals that are in real foods. So once we got me off of the my misstep of choosing protein drinks as opposed to real food, the weight was beginning to go down again. There was my unique metabolism. So yeah, my protein drinks are much fewer and far, I wouldn't say I don't have them at all, but they're much fewer. They're much less frequent during the day. And because I was having four or five of them, and I'm not joking, I was, I felt that I was wanting to build my protein because I was, as you remember, just in between houses and life and everything. And I just couldn't get meal prep done. So I would substitute a meal with a protein shake and it was not working. And so when we took me off of that and realized what was going on, I was, let's get you back on real foods. And that helped. So real foods are also a, a real option. Like don't, don't rely on the supplements like food alternative. It's, it's, they're great, but they're not an alternative for real food. So I would speak to that plateau, have as much real food as you can. Nutritionists are still scratching their heads over some of the unique mi minerals and micronutrients within real foods. And how do they interact with one another to cause both weight gain, like muscular growth, as well as weight loss fat burning like understanding the metabolism of food it's it's extensive I'm, I'm glad you brought that up that's another level and i know mike can relate to this because right now mike's not having any protein shakes right this all solid food and i used to do the same thing when i was pushing for fat loss like getting ready for bodybuilding shows i would just focus on real food for, for two reasons. One, you're going to get more thermogenic effect from eating real food because when you actually eat and digest and process food, uh, one, I mean, your body has to burn more calories in the digestion and utilization of that food. Whereas protein shakes, I mean, th there's not a lot of digestion. I mean, it's basically pre-digested for you. You drink it, your body doesn't really have to work hard to, to assimilate it. So if you're taking calories in, calories out, that, that's another factor with the whole calories in, calories out equation doesn't work. Because if you're drinking a shake, let's just say, okay, you, you drank oh, 200 calories in a protein shake, or you had 200 calories from chicken breast, your body has to break down and digest that chicken breast, whereas the protein shake just is so easily absorbed. But with that being said, like, I, I don't want to be the <laughs> one side at all, because there are certain situations where that is advantageous. If someone is really tr struggling to get enough protein, hey, supplementing can certainly get you over that edge. But once you're already optimizing all the variables, like the training, the nutrition, everything is dialed in and they're still stuck in that plateau, then switching the protein shake calories to real protein food calories can make a noticeable difference for sure. So I'm glad you brought that up. And it, it's interesting. It goes to show calories are not created equal. If we took a, you know, a 2000 calorie diet of processed food versus a 2000 calorie diet of protein and vegetables and complex carbohydrates and healthy fats, there's two totally different responses within the body. You know, on the cellular level, on the metabolic level, like you, you could have someone who's skinny fat on 2000 calories of pizza and Pop-Tarts 
And then someone who is lean and muscular on 2000 calories of lean protein, veggies and complex carbs and healthy fats. Like it's, it's two totally different responses. Um, Mike, in your situation, uh, like counting your calories now, like what's your calorie intake right now? Uh, today, I haven't had my, my last meal yet. I've already logged it. Ballpark, like these, these days. Yeah, today. it's about 2,800. 2800 all right i mean let's let's show that again like there's mike i mean this is a, a recent picture this one here in the black shorts 2800 calories and he's got visible abdominal definition vascularity single digit body fat and i was mentioning earlier about the guy who's stuck at a plateau eating 1700 calories That's Can I ask a question yeah go ahead yep. so mike i'm just so freaking impressed because we're talking four years and what's your weight right now? Uh, 100 and, it's right at 160, 162. It's been fluctuating. But Here's right the thing that's, what that's impressing me is, wait a second. Your body mass looks a whole lot heavier than 169. If I can get the consistency, man, because first of all, your face does not look death warmed over. And I've never seen someone that... <laughs> got low body fat that doesn't look that way and, and you look awesome and I, okay, I, I, I know what it's like to go from super fat and you get to a point where you actually see change and it motivates you now to take it to the next level and that takes time and I did get obsessed to get below 10 percent and when I did that I didn't understand this at all I just kept cutting and cutting and I got below 10 and I worked my butt off and but I looked like I had cancer, but I had vein shown and definition, but I was 169. Or no, I was 159. I'm 185 right now, but I'm like, whoa, wait. You can have lower weight and still look massive. That's what I don't know how you got well, I, I'm gonna learn how you got there, but I'm just saying consistency. Yeah, the consistency and to and to get to the point where you're eating that much food consistently. I don't know. I'm just overwhelmed with what's working, but I don't know if I have the, uh, whatever the trick is to kind of stay on course through these changes over a long enough time to not get stuck somewhere and go, I'm afraid of getting fat or I'm afraid of getting cancer looking. What, what we did, the, with the way my program started, I did seven months with resistance bands. And my coach at the time was a, a young guy, very nice guy. And I was complaining about not making any gains. And his response to that was, well, you're beyond middle age. You can't make gains. And I'm thinking, why am I paying you money then? And he was no longer my coach after that. And that's when I found uh, Lee on Facebook. He, was, he posted about um, calling in and, and talking about the Muscle Optic 40 Blueprint. And it was right after I, I joined him. And, and if you look at that picture from 2021, when I started with him, I had lost the, um, I had gone, because I would get DEXA scans. I had gone from 23% body fat. The, 20, the 2020 picture, September 1st, I had my first DEXA scan and I was at 23.5% body fat. When I started with Lee in 2021, I was at 11.3% body fat because I did all of this extreme intermittent fasting. Would never, ever recommend that to anybody. It, it works, I get it. But through my experience, if you look, that's where I look emaciated. You know, look at the face in that picture compared to the other ones because I had I had dropped that fat so quickly. So and if you, if you four, years, four years from now, I'm going to be freaking 70 years old. If I can look like you at 70, <laughs> I just feel like I'm so freaking old. How do you really put on mass? But Lee, I'm going to trust you, man. But I, it's, I, yeah, I you know, it's, it, it's your consistency and your diet and, and your workouts. Now, I will say all of that said, I am on testos testosterone replacement through the doctor. I went in for testing in December of 2020, and I was in the very low range, well, the upper limits of the low range. And I go into my blood testing. We we um, alter my my dosage all the time, um, so it's not like I have a super jacked up testosterone. I'm in the the mid high range. I like seven hundred and eighty something or whatever it was. So from two hundred to seven hundred. So I'm not like off the chart. But in four years, I have missed two weeks of workouts because I had surgery. 
other than that, I haven't missed, I haven't missed any workouts. I, I've rearranged. Maybe I couldn't do it while I was traveling a day. So if I was supposed to do something on Tuesday, maybe I had to do it on Wednesday. But I didn't just skip the, the workout. Skip leg days? No. You know, I've never done, never done that. Two years ago in October, I started doing two a day workouts. Because I'm retired now, I have the time. So I, that's a few of the, of the advantages that I've had that have helped, certainly. And the testosterone, yes. Two a day workouts, yes. Consistency, most definitely. And eating cleanly. I gave up alcohol, it'll be two years in December. Every little thing that, that I would read about that would have an adverse effect, I tried to get rid of that. And uh, I decided in 2021, and it was, it was about this time, somebody challenged me in one of my fitness groups on Facebook, you should do a bodybuilding contest. And I kind of laughed about it. And then I talked about it with Lee and, and Lee didn't laugh. Mm -hmm. He thought it was a great goal. So since 2021, that's my show in three weeks has been my goal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like, wow, it's, it's actually here. But that, that is what's kept me going is I would think now, how is this cookie? How is that gonna get me where, to where I need to be? Or this bowl of ice cream or this half of a pizza. And Larry knows I've been on three or four cruises, I think, since I started. You can go on a cruise, you can go on vacation and you can still, you can eat very well. But yeah, I had dessert every night on the last three cruises. I would pick selectively. So I made sure I was picking like the low sugar or the no sugar option. Uh, I didn't go through the buffet line, you know, and like load up my plate to, you know, beyond <laughs> where it's falling off the plate, you know, like some people do. But I, I still would go to the, to, to, to the late night buffet and have another snack at 10 o'clock at night. But it's just all about your choices. I would work out every day on the ship. So I made, I made it work for me because I just kept thinking, what is my goal? So I, you know, set a goal, whatever you want that to be, and then just keep reminding yourself, how is this going to get me to my goal? Right. And that's what I said. Chocolate chip cookie. I know there's one on the cruise ship. We're going on a cruise the second week in November after the show is done. And I know there's a chocolate chip cookie waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful because when I got my leanest, I, I was one of those crazy. And I had right after the sh I had a photo shoot and there were a bunch of cookies afterwards and I just went nuts. And yep. unfortunately, three months later, I had fatty liver disease put on like i don't know how much weight and i realized and i was getting cramps it was those freaking cookies i couldn't stop eating them and that's that same thing happened to me my first oh. december i made um we we make a lot of cookies for christmas presents and i also did english coffee and i found a bag of it in the freezer and i had not had anything sweet for four or five months well i had one piece of toffee and then pretty soon i had a second one and i ate the whole one pound bag that night and had a second one the next day and then wondered why my my fat body fat level went up my next scan. Stop though and reset. Yeah, I just it said, wait, whoa, 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 we're not gonna do that. And the same same with the alcohol. I've told Lee before. I'm not one that, that would drink because I like the way I felt. I drank because I like the taste. So I'll have you know a shot of Jack Daniels Fire, the cinnamon flavored one. That was pretty good. Let's have a second one. Well, stupid me, it hadn't kicked in yet, so I would have a third one. And then it's like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> let me crawl to bed you know so i just decided that that's one thing i, I just had to get rid of yeah. and i stopped december 2022 20, i think it was and haven't had anything since i miss it every every now and again we still have it in the house i just don't drink it of course what we have in the house i don't like i think i've been doing is just try to try to focus on what my goal was whether it was a show or getting to under 10 percent body fat my goal was getting to 10 percent body fat because i had told my wife that if I did, I was going to get a jet ski for our lake house. I'm under 10% now, but we haven't bought that yet. So <laughs> if I got to 12%, you'll be fine. <laughs> so. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, like that real world experience. I mean, that, that is invaluable. And I think well, I, you know, I, everybody wants to do a bodybuilding contest. I, I get that, but that was, that was, that was the goal for me. You sure. know, when someone challenged me, I, don't challenge me to something if you don't want me to do it, you know? <laughs> And um, when I discussed it with Lee, and he didn't laugh. I thought, well, this is this is a legitimate goal. All four I appreciated you, Lee, when you I mentioned it, and you didn't laugh, yeah. but there was not the support. But I, when I explained to you why my why I was doing it, then as you listened to my reasons, there was a much more of an agreement that you were understanding what my reasons were. There, I know I'm not going to win medals, but I wanted. I, I'm trying to do this journey so that i can inspire other people to take up something that is meaningful for you 
remember, I'm not a sports person and we know my history was not in athletics, but I found something that I could do and enjoy. And bodybuilding, we found out, was this, one of the safest activities to do. And so I would tell other men around me, okay, oh, I've never been very athletic and I've not been very, you know, I don't do any, do much sports. I said, well, take up resistance training. It's a sport and it's safe and it's good for you and it will, it will carry you for the long run. But I, I, I like speaking to those men in the group who have had little to no athletic background and say, you know, what can I do as an activity? I would say, take up resistance training, take up bodybuilding. It is as healthy and as safe an activity as you will find. And I still, uh, Dr. Gabriel Lyon saying, we're not over fat, we're under muscle. Well, I'm, I've taken that up. And to be, I will say, although I don't quite look it, I'm in the best shape of my life. I have more strength, more muscularity than I've ever known in my entire life. I'm, I'm, I'm happier and better in many ways in my life. So that's why I speak to the, the other participants in this group saying, you know, who may be thinking, gee, that I, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if it's possible. Give it a try. Step in there and discover the wonder of the weight room. Because if I had never been in there, I don't know what my life would have been like, but I, I, I can't testify strongly enough to its, its wonderful power to transform this part of your life so it touches other areas of your life. And as, a, as an intellectual, as a scholar, it has, it's increased my ability, but my mental skills significantly. So Paul, and, that's what I was gonna say. I want your mental acuity and your wisdom. Well, thank you. That's what but, I want. And, and, and I want my six pack. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, the, the, the other thing too, Paul, I'm sure you've heard the same thing from Instagram and various fitness groups. People look at us and say, wow, I can do that at your age. I, I can do it at my age because you can do it at your age. Or I get comments, hey, it's not too late for me to, to get in shape or to start or whatever. And it's like, that's why I, I knew that when my first coach told me that I was beyond middle age and couldn't make any gains, I knew that was total crap. My mother-in-law at the time was almost 90 and was doing powerlifting. So she didn't fall down or if she fell down, she could pick herself back up. And she still goes to strength training at, well, she, and almost 91. So she was at 88 or whatever at that time. It's not too late. Right. And people, you know, yeah, my goal is not necessarily somebody else's just to get strength training and in shape. And that, that's cool. That's fine. But to be able to say, you know, at 60 years old, I'm doing this. I would have, you know, because I, I came from the non-athletic background. Uh, I'm very uncoordinated. If I can trip on something and fall down, I'm there. I'm your man for that. I can do that. You know, but it's nice for people to say, wow, you, you inspire me to, to at least try or, to, you know, to, to even at my age, I can I can try doing something. You and know? I will. I am 70. So, Scott, there's much hope for you. Thank you. You're welcome. And being moving on from 70 into 80, I'm living the paradigms that were set out by Peter Attia's book, Outlive. I'm the, one of the most exciting things is, is I'm, I'm looking forward to being one of those decathletes that I can do all of these amazing tasks. Like Lee, Lee and I still laugh. I think Mike was there. I talk about the dog food, putting the dog food on my shoulders and carrying it to the door. They never expected a grandfatherly figure to pick up two 50 pound bags of dog food and carry it on his shoulders to the front door to help them. Those are the kinds of moments where all of that training and lifting is, is significantly meaningful and powerful. But buried beneath that is the, the under, understanding that every person coming into this total fitness bodybuilding brings his own journey, his own battles, his unique biological differentiation, that people are not going to respond to the program in the same way, but the principles remain the same. Uh, good enough, but good enough consistently is better than periodic brilliance. So I'm steadily gaining i'm steadily improving and that i i speak to that enthusiastically his program works because he works the program he works with you to find out what happens so if i could speak to people who when you know i i've heard about this and get in there dive in both jump in both feet what are you going to lose that yeah <laughs> Yeah, and that's about it. You, you'll look at your life and you'll go, I'm so glad I made this decision. Mm -hmm. And I am glad I made this decision. I'm glad I'm part of Lee's group. But I've been, 
I'm a, one of the strongest advocates in my world for physical fitness and you wouldn't have believed it 10 years ago. I want to debate to stop sports in school. Yes, I want to debate. And the principal said, I don't care. We're keeping it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> good on him. <laughs> right? Yeah, good on him. But it shows you, I, when, you're, when you're bound and determined for something, my, my story is much like Paul of Damascus, and like, a, like a, a complete turnaround. And what I used to put down, I now advocate. And I advocate it to my own students. And Lee has been there when I've told students in the gym, the reason you're not doing well in your school is because you're not doing well in the gym. Get back into this gym and start working out and you'll watch yourself grow. Mechanical engineering student last week got his first A ever. And he's been working out consistently for the past six or seven months. And he got his first A ever in his life. He was not much of a student. And he got his first A. I, we hugged. <laughs> it was marvelous. So I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm very excited about people who are new and, and concerned and carry their concerns because I was there. And I speak to that with enthusiasm. You know, th that's what makes this so powerful is the real world stories and experiences here. You know, just sharing that. You know, it's nice to see new people joining in and like say, we're just embarking on the journey. But the thing is, is we have the support system here, right? Like we have a system in place, but you got that support and we'll figure it out as we go. Like, that's the truth. Like we're going to lay out a solid action plan for you. But I honestly, your, your initial program, I don't know if that's the initial program. I mean, that's where we're going to start. And then through regular check-ins and regular coaching calls like this and following along with your progress, we'll make it work. You know, just like with Mike's plan, like, okay, we, we started off with a template. He increased his meal frequency, increased his training frequency and stuff. And we, we molded it and his body has evolved as he's progressed. Same when, we started out, we, when we started out, you designed the program to use either weights or resistance bands. That's right. because you. I you, switched you, it and I wanted the bigger challenge of weights. And then we switched the program to uh, a different plan, you know, a different workout plan. But yeah, it, it's totally fluid. We change it as you need to change it. And, and the thing is, we want to make small changes. So like, and that, that's a prime example of it. Like you are currently working out with resistance bands. So, so instead of saying, okay, Mike, you got to throw those bands away and you got to join the gym. Like maybe that's too big of a jump at this stage. Like here's the options. You can still do this with resistance bands, but here's some free weight options that you could do mm -hmm. in addition to that. And then gradually, you know, you elaborated on your home gym and now you've got a, a great, well-equipped home gym. Plus you have a gym membership. So you've transitioned from the, the resistance bands to proper weight training, if you will. And that's what I would encourage. But I mean, we've got guys who went through the program working out at home with minimal equipment and still made it work. One, one of the regulars, Jeff Samatero, like he just made a whole life's change, moved to California. And now he's working out with minimal equipment and still making it work. So like we can we can work within the variables and the constraints of what you have available for exercise equipment, but it's the bigger picture of consistency with the training, consistency with the nutrition, seeing how your body is responding and making adjustments. And then, of course, having the support system, right, to know that you're not going through this alone, right? And if, if there's challenges you're going through, probably someone else has been through a similar challenge. It can steer you away from those landmines. Like in Mike's situation, when you have your post contest cookie, <laughs> I'm sure by being a part of this group, that's not going to turn into a three month binge. And next thing you know, we're going to see a, a 200 pound Mike. <laughs> I hope not. But you know, I, I also need to say too, for the, for the new folks, if you're going through some struggles, of course, we're here to support you, but Lee is also here. There's multiple times that I had conversations with him because I didn't, I wasn't making progress. And as I said, more than once, he had talked me off the ledge, you know, because I expect, I expect perfection under myself, not, and when I say perfection, I don't mean if I can't do it perfectly, I'm not going to do it at all. I expected, you know, to be doing every workout exactly as it's supposed to. I was going to do it anyway, but I, I just, I expect a lot out of myself, bottom line. Um, but I, we had multiple conversations because I thought, didn't feel like I was making progress. And he said, go back and look at pictures from three months ago versus, you know, two days ago. And then you see the, the changes. It's like, okay, yeah, calm down, carry on, literally. But the, that, that's one of the, you know, the, the, the real benefits of this program is you have Lee and you have the rest of us here to help you along. 
And that's where the whole good enough and good enough consistently comes in because a lot of us have that per perfection mindset. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough. Consistent the first time I didn't do my schedule in order that I had to take an extra day in there, I thought the world had come to an end because I'm obsessive compulsive. And guess what? It worked out just fine. And I went on and I could take rest days now and not worry about it. If I need a rest day, I take a rest day. You know, I don't skip the work. I just move it to the next day. So I still get the work I did, but I have an extra rest day in there. And that's a benefit because when you, when you rest, you grow. And that's important. Yeah. To have that flexibility. Cause I know uh, like prime example, Bill is joining us here. Bill has a rotating work schedule. So I actually designed two workouts for Bill. Okay. This is what we'll do when you have more time to dedicate to the gym. This is what we're going to do when you have less time to dedicate to the gym. And, and there's several guys who've gone through this program like that, like people who work rotating shifts, whether they're in oil camps or in mining camps, some people like, Hey, two or three weeks on two or three weeks off uh, different rotating shifts. And one of the guys who went through the program before was a truck driver had basically four day. No. Yeah. It was, it was four days where he was doing 12 hour work days, plus the travel and commute in between. Like there was no way he was getting in his workouts on those long working days but he had three rest days i said okay we're going to cram all your workouts into those three rest days is it optimal no but is it better than nothing yep he still made it work he ended up losing over 100 pounds right going through the program that was a uh, jeff lombard i mean it wasn't optimal but it worked you know like we'll make it work for your situation it'll be good enough and it'll be good enough consistently and we'll make it work right but no this was this was a wonderful call guys i really appreciate you for joining in and i always enjoy doing them but we're going to get ready to clue it up. And in the meantime, if you do have any questions or anything at all, feel free to participate on our Facebook group. Like this is a safe, supportive place where you can get the help and encouragement. And there's no stupid questions. If you've got a legitimate question about fitness and nutrition, post it to the group. I mean, especially to the VIP group. I mean, it's a small group. Everyone pretty much knows each other on a first name basis in here. You're not going to get shunned for asking us a, a stupid question. Chances are, if you've got a question, there might be somebody else there who's got similar questions. Post your questions and we'll keep that conversation going. And in the meantime, have a good night, guys. Take care. Well, see ya. well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Podcast. And if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the podcast. And if you know someone who could benefit from this, please feel free to share it with them. And if you would like some help with your own personal fitness and fat loss goals, whether that's losing the gut, building muscle, increasing your strength and athletic performance, if you would like some help with that, then I invite you to join me for a free strategy session coaching call. I have my information down in the show notes below where you can book in for a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with me and we can discuss you and your situation, your goals and what it is you're trying to achieve. And if I feel that you're a good fit, then I may invite you to come on board and join our Muscle After 40 coaching program, just like the guys you've seen in this podcast today. And if it's not a good fit, then I won't give you hyper BS, but I will point you in the right direction to get the help you need. I mean, I've got a large network of people in the fitness industry. So if I don't feel that I'm the right person to help you with your personal goals and your situation, then I'll probably be able to recommend you to someone who can. So either way, at the end of your free strategy session coaching call, you'll walk away with better insights on what you need to do next to reach your personal fitness goals. So that clues it up for today's episode, and we'll be back again next week with another episode of the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Podcast.